Now we're back in Blackroot only to complete the Simus core quest. We can find a Tyrion shack right underneath the Hedge Wizard, Hedge wi Wizard 1, which I confuse for Tyrions. And again, uh, the quest comes to a grinding halt once we uh, come to the realization that Tyrion is not there. He leaves a note there, but. As you can see, it's just pointless conspiracy theory trivial. Now then, there's not much else to do in Blackroot right now. I tried to steal a medallion of beauty for Padan Lil's quest, but they can normally be found, well, they can randomly be found on women that wear a blue dress, that were a random female NPCs that wear a blue dress, but none of them seem to have have one <laughs> randomly pop up. I will try later in home, but again it will be to no avail. Right now I just spend some time buying and selling items and simply restocking on the gorilla's journey into the Black Mountain Mines. Now then Oh, there's not much else to do right now. I don't know why I decided to leave it. Well, cut a few. Cut part of the gameplay here, but uh, it was just mainly to to show that since we are such a high level, since our technological skill is so high, then the shop, most of the shopkeepers, at least the ones that are not magically inclined, have a better reaction to us than before, and better reaction means better prices. Now after such a long hiatus, hi hiatus I need to remember what was what were the crafting recipes, or at least uh, an effective way to make money. Um, right now, that's what, that's what I'm doing. Then again, uh, I kind of want to talk about the plot a little bit. I want to mention that right now, uh, we ha what we have learned in the previous episode is that there are no more Black Mountain block. Uh, the Black Mountain clan mine is no more. It was vanished for a crime against all dwarven kind. These crimes uh, were well the results of Gilbert Bates have it to tinkering with dwarven technology and using it for profit, therefore changing the balance in all of our kingdom and the Black Mountain clan were held responsible just because they shot they sheltered Gilbert Bates and gave them access to the technology. Now uh, the only next lead we have is the Dread Isle, the Isle of Dread, call it whatever you want. It's a place where they were, where the whole clan was banished to live the rest of their days. But we won't continue the plot right away. There are a few side quests that I really want to do, or well, not really want to do, but I kind of wish to fulfill because they have a random chance of having a medallion of beauty on them. Then again, it's all. Uh, it's not fixed, but if I don't go there, I will never know for sure. The first one of them is the one that we'll complete in this episode. Will be the ancient the quest for the ancient ma uh, ancient maze. It's just an area right um, to the west of their home, about three days to the to the west, which hold uh, some the next tier of undead. The uh, the Gore Guards, also known as the Lord's Slave, in another dungeon. These enemies are particularly dangerous because they have, um, like the, the brute fangs, they have very high dexterity. Therefore, they can reach you from a very long distance and will guarantee hit you. They hit for a lot of damage. They're pure bruisers. And they can also damage your armor upon contact. The damage is based around, I think, their strength. Therefore, they can tear your armor asunder very quickly. Uh, right now, we will be going back to Dermholm just for me to oh, to 
steal, <laughs> to try to steal another medallion of beauty and again fail horribly because apparently the random number generator doesn't like me that much. Uh, what else? Ah, yes, there's also the completion of the Bessie Tune mine here. I'll be taking the most honorable approach and, well, I'll be giving the deed to the well, to the sister. I can't remember her name right now. Uh, in any case, the reward for it uh, will be just some uh, alignment points, uh, well, karma points, call it whatever you want, and a magic sword. The magic sword, uh, try to give, I try giving it to Virgil, but it's not better than the balance sword he is carrying right now, so it will stay in the inventory for a little while. So, um, again, just a le low level reward. Uh, if we had we have taken the brothers aside and given him the deed, he would just given us 500 gold coins and that will be the end of it. It doesn't affect, uh, it affects the ending in that no matter whom you give the deed to, the Bessie Tune mine will be operational and therefore we're one step closer to the improvement of uh, Shrouded Hills. Ah yes, Sarah Tune, that was her name. Now then, after the trek through the Black Mountain Mines, most of her characters have leveled up a, f uh, a couple of times, among them uh, Jaina and Magnus, and have access to a higher tier of crafting. Uh, Jaina can now make uh, potions, not potions, sorry, tonics, uh, tonic that will extend our health, uh, not extend our health, but uh, just the second tier of healing items. Passive, uh, some passive regeneration for both stamina and health. Right now I'm just going to check with the diary, just to see the new information. Yes, we have complete... Uh, I won't be giving him the pure ore until much, much later. Not because I don't have it, but because I really don't. I really want to keep backtracking to a minimum, and we will be going back to Shrouded here. Was spoiler alert. How can I help you? Now Magnus can make right now uh, auto skeleton keys, which are just like the skeleton keys, but instead of having a five percent bonus, they have a ten percent bonus. Even then. Virgil won't be able to pick a lock to save his life. Lock picking in this game is... well, it's a very specialized skill, even with a very good perception like mine, and spending nearly all my po points into lock picking, I was ju with an auto skeleton key, I was, had, I was just successful about 60% of the time. Now, another important is that he can, uh, thing is that he can make the featherweight axe, which is one of the components for the pyrotechnic axe, which is pretty much the, the, the end game weapon. Unbreakable, and yes, um, an unbreakable weapon that deals fire damage and has uh, a pretty decent speed. Now then, back to the ancient back to the game and to the ancient maze. What? Uh, yes, there it is. The thing about the ancient maze is that it also holds an altar to one of the well, to one of the gods that we will have to pray to during the god's quest, the, p the pilgrimage, so to speak. Uh, we will be keeping the rifled cannon at hand at all times. Uh, Yes, yeah, same. Um, yeah, there we go. A black diamond. Black diamonds are a very rare item that is needed as a sacrifice to the god's quest and offering. Uh, they can only be found here and in another location in the game. But I want to well, save some time now and get the black diamond. 
right now, by the way. Now then, uh, another one thing that I found very curious about the game, uh, that I did like, was the, that you can jump out of windows. More games should have that, just it's an escape route, you take it, you use it. Um, what can I say? The uh, ancient maze is just one of the many areas of the game that is well has no real purpose. It's a dungeon, nothing more, nothing else. There's no backstory, no mystery here. That just ruins that for you to explore. That are filled with well, mid to well mid to mid high level enemies. Uh, thankfully, the undead right now. Ah, there we go. The gore guard. They are so uh, sparsely distributed that you can find them one at a time. If we were fighting more than one at a time, it would definitely be a problem. Now, I don't know how it is that I'm not missing hopefully right now, but I won't complain about a stroke of good luck. And one last thing is that this, uh, the amulets, uh, emerald, ruby, they're just uh, like gems, like the gemstone, they're mainly vented fodder. They have no real use, no real, uh, no real value besides being able to besides sell them that to the highest bidder. Again, sniping with a uh, rifle can. That's quite a thing. Speaking of sniping, um, I will have to decide if I want to max out the gunsmithy skill tree. If I max it out, I will be probably swap in most of my items for variations of a sniper rifle, either the looking glass rifle or the handgun version of the looking glass rifle. Not much difference, just the speed, uh, the amount of times I can shoot. My atrocious uh, dexterity is the main factor that I'm interested in. I'm more interested in being sh in being able to have one weapon that shoots fast, uh, f shoots a few times per round, than to have one uh, than to risk it all into one hand because the uh, very the tip the deviation is so high. There's a lot of dispersion in the possible damage that it's simply not worth risking uh, though into getting that critical hit considering that we are mm, that uh, HP and the subsequent armor class uh, is very very low since we are not don't have the strength to carry well we do have the strength but we will have so suffering crippling penalties to our speed and our attack chance and attack attack rate, sorry. And well, this place is more about the enemies of this place. Um, higher level undead, a few golems, or or golems, seeded masses, and bears. Not mu not much to it. Now then, another important factor that I have told a few times. Most, um, at least, uh, more than half, I uh, said 75% of all unidentified magical items in the game are cursed. And unfortunately, the AI, if what? they even if they don't know what it is, even if it's even if the item is cursed, if it's detrimental, if it has um, horrible effects that will alter the skills of your NPCs permanently, like a cursed sword in the sewers that will reduce the user's dexterity by one every time they score a critical hit, they still will equip it, they still will use it. Which is <laughs> baffling, which is quite baffling if you ask me. But still, the enemy, both enemy and friendly AI in this game, is. Oh, it's, uh, it's very, very lacking. Therefore, the only solution that I have is to either give uh, magical items that I know they will not use, like giving, for example, small medium armor to Gar because he physically cannot equip it, or to carry them myself. Shields, on the other hand, everyone can equip, everyone will equip, so I have to make room for it from right here, right now. And now, 
finally, there is the uh, the other thing that this place has, as I said, oh, it's an altar. The God's Quest involves that we go visit the uh, the God's Quest involves that we visit the altar scattering around the world in a very specific order, and well, offering a sacrifice offering a sacrifice to the gods will give us a bonus, a temporary bonus in that area until we make another sacrifice. No, until we make a sacrifice to the god of another ti uh, of another tier. Yes, because there are three tiers of gods. There are gods of uh, more positive, gods that are more negative, and finally there's like a um, third tier, third combination that is more about neutral gods, neutrality, or whatever it may, it may be called. Now then, the altar to the god in this ancient maze is dedicated to uh, an evil god, a dark god, and therefore it's the dark and dark gods in this quest are the second tier of gods. Therefore we will be revisiting the ancient maze much later on, uh, but not right now. And besides we kind of I kind of need experience because I want to rush. Uh, I, w I really need at least 10 points right now to upgrade my equipment. But if I don't reach those ten points, I will be I will farm off screen for the experience points in the Taran sewers. The Taran sewers are just it's another area that I don't want to show because again it's just one long gauntlet of enemies. Uh, there are some fixed drops in the sewers, like the uh, elixir of persuasion. Well, not the the elixir of hypnotic suggestion which is the scientific uh, technological variation of this same spell it will charm it was actually it essentially charms an enemy there's not much to it yes it's a, it's a charm it's a charm spell in tonic format but since we won't be Walter whiting it up at least not right now. I don't really want to spend points into uh, chemistry discipline. But if things go my way, or at least once we have maxed out the important skill trees, I may go that route. We will have both explosives, uh, but we will be using a combination of firearms and explosives as our main tact combat tactics. Now there. The behind the sarcophagus is the is the outro, and finally let me just uh, work a bit around my inventory to get all the uh, to carry all the magic items and not have my extremely gullible NPCs curse themselves. I'll see you in the next video.